Hey peeps, we are back. It's Saturday, it's story time. Happy Saturday, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. Um, and thinking about story time this week, I don't know, it seems to get harder and harder for me to think of things. And I spent some time with my mom today and I asked my mom, I said, hey mom, I said, do you remember X, Y, and Z? And all this stuff and she busted out laughing and she said yes i absolutely remember you know all of these things so i said well i'm going to share some of these things on story time tonight so one of the things that i remember is when i was in the first grade okay i just had my own little personality i'm one of those kids that you know i'll just do whatever i want i walked to my own beats and i was an only child for quite some time and I was quite spoiled. So you know how every year they have parent-teacher conference. So first grade, my mom, mom goes to my parent-teacher conference. She's very involved. She shows up for my conference and my teachers ask her, she says, do you watch soap operas? And my mom says, yes. She said, do you happen to smoke? And at that time, my mom was a smoker and she says, yes. She said, well, when you're watching TV, she said, do you put your foot up on the coffee table? And my mom said, yes. And she said, well, Pia does that here. She said she puts her foot up on her desk and she pretends to smoke her crayons. She said, and when I asked her what she was doing, she said she was washing her soaps. And, <laughs> oh my God, the crazy thing is, I remember doing that. You know, and I don't know why I did that. That is so ridiculous, right? My mom said that she was so embarrassed. She could have crawled into a hole somewhere. I mean, you know, just a mess. And I remember her coming home from conference and she didn't yell at me or anything, but she did sit down and she had a conversation and she said, you know, you cannot put your feet up on your desk. You cannot pretend to smoke crayons. You cannot do that. When you are in school, you are supposed to be focused and working and following direction from your teacher. I don't ever want that school to call me to tell me again that you are in that school with your feet up on those people's desks smoking crayons. Do you understand? And I said, yes. You know, and I never did it again. Okay, let me tell you, I never did it again. But Every time I think about it, I just bust out laughing because I she would always sit on the couch smoking cigarettes with her feet up on the table watching General Hospital. And I thought that was the thing, you know. Kids are always doing something that they have no business doing, you know. And so then I remembered years, years later, my little nephew, I'm going to call him Johnny. So Johnny was talking to my mom. And she had gone on this vacation where she swam with the dolphins. And my mom thought it'll be kind of cute to tell Johnny that, you know, she trained dolphins because she was showing him the pictures of her with the dolphins and, you know, the dolphins coming up to touch her hand and all that stuff. And he thought this was everything. Oh my gosh, my mom, she trains dolphins, right? So he goes to school and he tells everybody this, including his teacher. Well, his teacher calls my sister and tells my sister how excited she is that our mother trains dolphins. And my sister was so ticked. She said, well, what? She was thrown by this whole thing thinking, are you kidding me? And I remember she called my mom and she said, mom, please stop telling the kids these crazy stories she said because they believe it and now they've gone to school and the woman thinks that you are official dolphin trainer and i mean it was hilarious my mom <laughs> she is such a sweet woman she is so lovely and everything that she says we've always just take it for face value you know the kids are super excited and it's it's hilarious and Anyway, I just thought that was kind of cute. I remember also at one time, I, this was, we were still in West Virginia and I think that I was in kindergarten at the time. 
and our downstairs neighbor, Miss Lightfoot, she used to babysit me while my mom was working because my mom worked two jobs and she took care of me. Um, during the day, she worked at a bank. At night, she worked at a nightclub. And then, you know, in between times, she was raising me. So anyway, Miss Lightfoot, she would babysit me when my mom was working. And one day I just got tired of hanging out with Miss Lightfoot. It was outside playing and I just didn't want to go back in. And I knew what time I needed to go back in. So I went back in and I said, Miss Lightfoot, my mom's home now. And she said, your mom's home now. She said, well, she's home early. And I said, yes, she's home. And she said, well, normally she comes and gets you from here. And I said, well, I saw her while I was outside. I'm just gonna go home now. And she says, okay. So I go back to our apartment. I can't get in, the door is locked, you know. So I'm just sitting out in the hallway in front of the door. And after a while, it got to be really, really boring. So I went back to Miss Lightfoot's house and I said, um, Miss Lightfoot, my mom is gonna make a cake and she needs a really big bowl. And she said, okay. So she gives me this really big bowl and I come back. So I'm sitting in front of the door and I don't have anything but this bowl. So then I go back and I said, Miss Lightfoot, my mom says that she needs a really big spoon and a bunt cake pan. And she says, your mom's making a cake. She needed a bowl, the bunt cake pan and a big spoon. And I said, yes. So she gives me the big spoon and the bunt cake pan. <laughs> oh my God. I go back up to our apartment. I'm sitting out in front of the door and I am banging on the bowl and the pan with this spoon. I mean, I am making my own music. I am having a great time. And let me tell you, Miss Lightfoot caught me. <laughs> she came up to our apartment and she said, I knew it. She said, I knew something wasn't right. She said, your mama, first of all, when it came to the door when she needed to get you. Second of all, there is no way in the world your mama would have been making a cake and needed the spoon, the bowl, and the dang old pan. <laughs> She said, you get your butt back downstairs. And I said, oh gosh, boy, was I in trouble. When my mom came home, she said, girl, what was you thinking? And I said, I don't know. You know what I mean? I just wanted to have a good time and I didn't want to go back in. It, it was a mess. She had a real serious conversation with me and then she made me go to my room. And you know, the crazy thing is whenever she would make me go to my room, I had these little, a little record player that had these different color records that came with them but they all they all but the only thing that they played was mother goose songs you know those old school songs and i would turn my record player up as loud as it would go and i would stand in my window and sing my songs until it would irritate my mama to death and she would say come on out of that room <laughs> oh my gosh oh those were the days. And I had a room that looked kind of like Pepto-Bismol. I had a canopy bed that was white, trimmed in gold, and everything else was pink. I mean, the canopy was pink, all the sheets, the pillowcases, everything, the walls, everything was pink. I was a princess. Mm -hmm. I had an Annie mansion and an Easy Bake oven, but it was not from Easy Bake. It was from somebody else, and it kind of looked like an old-fashioned you know, wood burning oven. It was really pretty. My papa got it for me for somewhere. I have no idea. But anyway, I was just a spoiled, rotten kid with a great imagination. I mean, and I was a liar, <laughs> I guess. Anyway, it was good times. Growing up when I grew up was fun and life was so different then. And, you know, you could talk to strangers then, <laughs> but not now. Anyway, moving on. So I've been telling you guys a little bit about Aaron, but I thought tonight I would introduce you guys to Aaron and how I first met him. Okay, so there are some times when I give you story time that Aaron and Eric are going to intersect. There's going to be situations that, you know, none of them was good. <laughs> none of those interactions were good. But anyway, so I remember I told you guys at one point, at one time I worked for Blockbuster Video as a manager and I quit and went on to work for an insurance company for four years. During that time, working for that insurance company turned out to be an absolute nightmare. 
it just got to be so repetitive. It was the same thing. It was stationary. It was sitting at a desk and I was just getting very, very irritated and I was unhappy at that job. You know, at the last year that I worked there, I would cry to work every morning. Every morning I would cry on my way to work because one, I had to drop my baby off at daycare, which I didn't want to do. I hated leaving him. You know, every mom goes through that where you just don't want to leave your baby to go to work. But I would leave him every morning and I would cry the 20 minutes to work every day. Then on the way home, I would bitch, whine, and moan about how much I hated that job. Well, one day I cried on my way to work. I got to work and I sat down and my phone rang and I answered the phone and as the lady was telling me whatever it was she wanted to tell me, I said, ma'am, you're going to have to call back and get somebody that works here. And I hung up. I took my badge that gets you into the door over to my boss's desk. I threw it on his desk. I said, I've quit and walked out to my car and I smiled the entire way home. And as I was going home, I said, you know what? I have two more paychecks and after that, I need to have a job by then. And you know what? I will. I just can't do this anymore. I cannot continue to cry to work every day and then whine, bitch, and moan all the way home about how much I hate this job. Especially when I get to go home to this beautiful baby who loves me. He does not need all this stress and aggravation. So what I did was when I got home, I got on my computer and I applied to go back to work at Blockbuster as a manager. And I got hired. You know, I still had one more paycheck to go by the time I got hired. So I didn't miss any money or anything. I didn't do anything that was going to jeopardize my kid's life or my life. You know, I just wanted to do something different, being more active. You know what I mean? I wanted to be, you know, more healthy. Um, I just wanted less stress and a few more steps, you know, on my pedometer. This was before they had the Fitbit. Anyway, so I get the job and they transfer me to my original location that I worked in all those years before. And I said, well, I'll be dag on. So I get to work, it's my first day, it's November 4th. I'll never forget that day. The, the manager that was there at the time, he was introducing me to all the employees there and he was letting them know that I am one of the new managers and I've, you know, have a history with the company, you know, giving me the whole orientation thing. And I looked up and there's this guy coming out of the break room door. This guy, is like 6'3", um, caramel color with e hazel eyes with a eight pack. I mean, I can see all that through the clothes. Okay, do you hear me? And I am just dead stop. I'm just staring at this man as if he's a piece of candy. Do you hear me? I'm ready to have some. Anyway, as I'm watching him, I'm thinking, who is this dude? number one. And number two, I'm thinking there is no way that a guy that looks like he looks is trying to holler at me. You know what I mean? There's no way. And I'm still just standing there and the other manager is having a full-fledged conversation. I don't know what he's saying. As far as I'm concerned, he is speaking to me. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. Cause I can't keep my eyes off this guy. So out of nowhere, the guy just walks up and he says, hello, I'm Aaron. And I said, hello, <laughs> oh my God, I'm just like speechless, right? And so um, he says, it's very nice to meet you. I look forward to working with you. And I said, yeah, same here, you know? So he goes on about his business and he leaves. So the manager there, he says, yeah, that's Aaron. He says, Aaron works here part-time, he's a school teacher. Um, but he's really a good employee and he's, you know, really good with people. And, you know, if you ever need anything, you can depend on this guy. And I said, oh, okay. And I thought to myself, I said, a school teacher. Okay. So I'm thinking, this is good. You know what I mean? He has a career. He's working there part time and, you know, he's dependable. Well, maybe two days later, I end up 
working a shift. He's working that same shift and it was a day before inventory. So whenever you have inventory, you know, you have to make sure that you take account of everything in the store. So we had to make sure that everything was perfectly straightened, perfectly lined, so that when we go through to scan everything, it's easier for us. And while we're doing that, we start to have a conversation. And he starts asking me all kinds of questions about me and my life. How old are you? Do you have children? You know, where'd you go to school? Have you lived here your whole life? And we're going back and forth. And I find out that he's four years older than me. Um, I find out that he's from Cleveland, um, that he graduated from Ohio State, and that he is a member of Alpha Kappa Psi. And, you know, we're just talking and laughing. And I find out that he doesn't have a girlfriend and he asked me if I had a boyfriend and then it comes to find out that, you know, I have a baby that is, when I met him, my son was about 10 weeks old. So I let him know that I have a son, he's 10 weeks old and, you know, I'm not with his father. And at that time when I met him, I can tell you honestly that I was completely broken. I mean, broken. The things that I had gone through with Eric had torn me apart. And for a long time, I just thought that I could fix Eric in that he and I could raise my son together and his children that he has with this other relationship that he was in. And I thought, we could make it a blended family. I really felt that I needed to have that and that it was something that I needed to do for my son. I needed us to be one happy family unit. So I was completely broken when I met Aaron. So then after that, it started to be every day that I had a shift, even if he didn't work that shift, he would still come into the store and he would talk to me, pretend as if he was looking for a video or something, and we'd have these conversations. Then it came to the point where he would call up to the store on my nights that I was working just to see what I was up to, what I was doing, and we would have all these conversations. And in the back of my mind, I thought, what is happening here? You know what I mean? Is this guy really interested in me or is this just him being friendly? You know, I have no idea, but at the same time, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about Eric and how I really want us to blend and become a solid family. Well, after a few weeks, I start spending a little more time with Aaron and I end up going to his house. And it, I found out that he was actually going through a bit of a breakup with somebody else as someone that he had dated for a while and the lady wanted marriage and he wasn't ready and he didn't want to be forced to marry her he did not want her to pressure him into marriage so they broke up so it turned out that I was in pain I was going through the worst situation that I could think of at the time and he was also upset in nursing this broken heart as well so we ended up kind of mending each other's hearts at the same time and I was really taken by him because he was different from any other guy that I've ever dated. Number one, he was college educated. Number two, he really knows how to cater to a person. He really understands how to get into your heart, your thoughts, your mind, and kind of soothe you, if you know what I mean. He really knows the game. Um, He's also someone who is very patient and he's encouraging. He um, was different from everything that I have ever known or seen. And he was also raised to be a little cocky, a little bougie. His cockiness sort of comes off and rubs people the wrong way. So he seems like he's extremely conceited. And if you would have asked him, he would say, I'm not conceited, I'm convinced. He's that kind of guy. Like he knows who he is. He knows that he is handsome. He knows that he is smart. He knows that he's fiscally responsible. You know, he knows that he's neat, he's clean, he's organized, and he's got a nice car. You know what I mean? He is that guy. And he is all of those things that Eric was not. And I just fell hook, line, and sinker. I mean, it was real for me. But in the back of my mind, I was still trying to be a family with my son. And Eric, I am young and stupid. You know what I mean? And I don't know how to act. 
Um, and I also was a different person then. I was a person that always said exactly what was on my mind. And it didn't matter how you took it. If I felt something, I would say it. If it hurt you, that's your problem. That's who I was then. I was very direct. And some of my comments were really rash and hurtful. And a lot of times he did not understand that. And one thing I have to say, Aaron may have been wrong in a lot of other ways. And I'm going to get to all his wrong later. But I have to be honest, I was really rough on him the first couple years of our relationship because I was just somebody who was raw and a matter of fact. It did not matter what the situation was. If I felt slighted, you were going to know about it. And he was kind and patient and he allowed me to act completely crazy um, up until a point. <laughs> up until a point but our relationship had so many ups and downs so many ups and downs and one of the things that really put a freeze on our relationship is since at that time i had not gone to college i went to college a lot later he had gone to college he had all these college buddies all these college friends he had all these teacher friends and at one point one of his good girlfriends who he went to college with and he was still friends with and she's in their sort of sister sorority, I guess it's called, I don't know. Um, he had told her about me and she wanted to meet me. And the way he delivered that information to me was, she wants to meet you to see if you meet, you know, her approval, you know, to be around him and his bougie friends. And I wasn't bougie at all. And that just rubs me the wrong way. So I told him straight to his face with no chaser, buddy, what you don't want to do is have me and this girl go out to dinner together and have her think that she's about to tell me or question me or say anything to me because what will happen is she will get cussed out. And oh my God, let me just tell you, I didn't meet her. No, ma'am. He made sure of that. No, ma'am. You cannot meet her because I'm sure you're about to lose it. And you know what, if he would have said, I have this girl who's my best friend. I love her to death. I've known her for all these years and she wants to hook up. She wants to meet. She wants you guys to hang out. I would have said, oh, cool, sure. And I would have went out and had a dinner with her and we probably would have got along great. But when you brought up that she wanted to see if I fit in, if I could pass her test to get her seal of approval, no, sir. No, sir. Okay. She's not in charge of me. Anyway. It was, there is just so many things that went on with him that was just too much. You know, as the relationship progressed, you know, he started sort of letting me know that I wasn't at the standard that he's at, that I wasn't on his level. You know what I mean? I wasn't as educated as him. I wasn't as refined as him. Um, I didn't have all the material things that he had. And it started weighing really heavy on my self-esteem. And my self-esteem was already low when I met him due to the whole thing with Eric. I think that when I met him, I had a self-esteem level of probably four. And then when you start to act as if you are all of this and I am just little tiny me, my self-esteem went all the way down to a two. So things started to heat up and it started to get really volatile because I'm thinking this guy is putting me down and I'm feeling devastated. You know what I mean? And it took me a while to pull myself out of it. Um, he started going to these happy hours after work and never inviting me. And I started to feel as if he was embarrassed about me. Um, it was happy hours with his coworkers. They would go every Friday after work. And then afterwards, a lot of times he would come to my house or he would just go back to his house and call me. And it just started happening out of the blue. And it was weeks after week after week. And I thought, 
this is not good. You know, why is he going to these happy hours every Friday and I'm never invited? And why doesn't he ever turn down the happy hours? And I never said anything. I just kind of went with it because I thought, what am I going to say? You know, dude, you're not allowed to go out to happy hour with your friends. And I went to work one morning and I get this phone call. It's my mom. And she says, hey, what's Aaron's last name again? And I said, why? And she says, just what is his last name again? And I said, Robinson. And she says, I'm going to call you back. And she hangs up. I said, oh God, what could this possibly be? So she calls me back and she says, listen to me. I have told you before that Aaron is not for you. She says, where was he this weekend? And I said, I don't know. And she says, well, I can tell you. She says, one of the ladies that I work with is friends with some of the girls from that sister sorority. And I found out that he was out of town with one of the teachers from his school. <sighs> Let me just tell you this. When you find out that the guy that you have fallen on head over heels in love with is cheating on you from your mama. <laughs> oh my God, I mean, really? Your mama? The mom who has already told you from jump she didn't like him and that she thought that he was not for me and that he was going to hurt me. Honey, listen, I hung the phone up. I'm working with one of my team members. Her name's Erin. I said, Erin, can you excuse me for a minute? She says, yeah. I go back in the office and I am crying. Do you understand me? Listen, I'm not ashamed to say it. I was crying my eyes out. I pick up the phone, I call Aaron, and I get his voicemail because he's a teacher, he's teaching, and I expected it. I get his voicemail and I leave a message and all I said was, who is Tamara? I'm gonna call her Tamara. And hung up. Listen, not 20 minutes later, this dude wheels into the parking lot He's like, wait, I can explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. I mean, this was crazy. Honey, listen, I read him for filth, okay, and sent him on his way. And then I slammed the door and cried for 35 minutes. Let me tell you, I was devastated. And look, sometimes I look back on that. I really do. And I say to myself, why didn't you let that be the end? Why didn't you walk away then? And the crazy thing is, one day, maybe two weeks before my mom called me with that fateful call, he and I were at my apartment and we were having this conversation and he called me by that lady's name. And I looked up and I said, who the hell is that? And he said, what are you talking about? And I said, you just called me Tamara. And he said, no, I didn't. And I said, well, what the hell is wrong with me? I know what I heard. And he said, oh, well, she's just one of the teachers at my school. Okay, why am I an idiot? <laughs> why am I an idiot? Listen, listen, Eric rips my heart apart. But Aaron put me through hell. He really did because I had grown up love for this dude. We went through everything. And it turns out just because a guy is really attractive, really educated, refined, you know, puts on this beautiful glow, this beautiful outward appearance, knows the Lord, goes to church. Oh, I forgot to mention he's a church guy. Okay, does not mean that he's a good guy. It really doesn't. And if you're watching Aaron, you know how bad you hurt me. You really do. And if you don't know, keep watching my story times. You will. And anyway, peeps, until next time. <laughs> Bye.